In this video, we're trying the Flare 58 espresso machine. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we are diving into home espresso brewing. We always said we're going to do more espresso videos and this is one of them. We're just going to do a little bit of an introductory uh, video here because this is a machine we're going to continue to play around with for quite some time. Uh, we just basically got it, uh, we unpacked it and now we've been testing it for a few days. So we want to share our kind of first insights. This is the Flare 58. I know a lot of you have already seen countless videos on this. Um, this machine in the kind of first generation was launched about a year ago, I believe, or two years ago. This is the latest version, which has a few kind of updates, which we think are a little bit interesting. And we basically asked ourselves, can we make tasty espresso with this? I mean, that's the biggest question, right? I think working as an espresso professional when it comes to espresso as well, we kind of get very used to the machinery we have and the stability that comes and um, basically the tips and tricks that we learn brewing and professionally is a little bit different from what we have to do here. So step one for us was kind of to rethink a little bit on how do we actually like our espresso, right? Uh, so one of the things here is that we've tried quite a few different grinders on this. We don't really have a super result with any home grinder right now. We're gonna get back to that. We actually use the latest Mythos model that's standing behind me to grind. Um, we're dosing 15 grams of coffee in the basket. Uh, so a little bit lower than what we're used to. A part of that is that there's a limitation to how much water actually goes into the chamber here. Um, so step one, basically when we use this machine is to make sure that we turn the heater on, uh, which we're gonna show you in details, detail as well. It basically has three different steps and you have to kind of click it up to enter whatever temperature that you prefer when you're brewing, which is kind of interesting. And it's something that gives a little bit more stability. That being said, we have used preheated water at 92 degrees to pour into the chamber to make this process a little bit more efficient. Um, another side note here is that we have a little basically distribution screen here, uh, which does make a massive difference. We tried a few shots without it, and that seems to be channeling quite easy. Uh, there seems to be a few other things that doesn't really work out. So we definitely recommend using it, even though it is rather inconvenient whenever you wanna clean this and pull another shot afterwards. It's just one extra thing to deal with. However, it seems to make taste to your coffee, so then we're kind of happy using it. Uh, another thing is that one of the first things I did was to pop in a larger basket here, so a 20 gram BST Ridgeless, and it just doesn't work. We're not getting any good shots. We have a lot of channeling. We have issue building up pressure. There's just a lot of things that doesn't work, so just stick with the recommended uh, basket that comes with the machine, right? Uh, without further ado, we're just gonna basically brew an espresso, uh, taste it, and then share a little bit more details on what we think about this little machine. One side note is that you make, have to make sure that this is clicked in properly, which is very easy to do, just kind of double, double check. Uh, we already have water in the chamber. It's been preheating on the highest temperature setting. I'm gonna pull up the lever and then I basically allow the water to go through. And once all that water has gone through, I'm gonna start my timer and press down to build up that pressure. And we're gonna keep it basically just above five here which again is really just an indication of um, basically the collected pressure, right? So it's not just the pressure that I'm pushing on the espresso here, so it's a little bit different. So again, I did a 15 gram dose and I'm gonna pull it out to be just above 30 grams in total liquid. Here we go. So we're getting 42.5 out there, which is roughly what we were looking for in about 30 seconds, which is definitely a slightly longer contact time than what we're used to, uh, which is also pretty much okay. So we're gonna taste this shot, clean up a little bit, and then come back with a little more insight in this brewer. So we're back, we tasted the espresso. Uh, we tasted many espressos to be fair, right? And uh, initially it was a little bit of a challenge. There's a few kinks you kind of have to really think about. Uh, one of them being when you basically pull up the lever initially, uh, make sure you watch that water level. And as soon as 
the water kind of disappears, that's when you want to start pulling down, right? So you don't want to continue all the way up. Uh, that always seems to have an issue, uh, basically building up pressure then later in the, in the brew. So if you want this to be really stable, and a really good espresso shot, then what you want to do is to really watch that water level. We make sure to always fill it as much as we can. I think kind of the obvious limitation for us here is that we would like to have a longer espresso shot. So even though our dose here is quite small, being 15 grams, which we would normally never do, um, and we get a kind of a one to two or one to 2.1 ratio, that's still way too tight for us. So our average espresso would be at least one to 2.5 one to three and above, right? So I think that's one of the limitations here that we find that it's a little bit of a challenge. I know there is a few people that figured out kind of how to add more water to it, which we're definitely gonna try in later videos. We're also gonna make sure to try some grinders that isn't a really expensive professional grinder standing behind us. We know there's home grinders that I'm sure is compatible with this and we're super happy and um, excited to hear what you think about that as well. We know some of you already have this and we're kind of curious to see what kind of grinders are you working with and why. Uh, we tried some of the grinders already that we reviewed on this channel and those hasn't really worked out, but they haven't worked out for the same reason they didn't work out on this machine, right? So that's not a fault to the machine, that's just a challenge with that grinder. Grinders are important basically, right? Uh, but overall, we can pull a really decent shot of espresso, there's no doubt about that. And we're looking forward to kind of continue experiment to see if we can make those really delicious cups of coffee, right? We think part of that is really figuring out how to extend that volume. Uh, we also want a slightly, slightly faster brew time, which of course we can regulate with grind size and so on, right? But overall, really interesting. Uh, I think another observation is that you really have to consider tamp pressure, which you do in all espresso, but I think when you brew with a level machine like that, it becomes even more kind of obvious. They do have a little tamper, um, that kind of comes with the package, which is really nice and it, there's nothing wrong with the diameter, it's, it's perfectly fine. I think it's, it's maybe a little bit of a challenge to tamp even with it because of the design of it. I would have preferred something a little bit more sturdy, but overall it's, it's perfectly fine, right? Keep in mind that this is also designed to be something that you can bring with you. Um, here in Denmark, for example, everyone is going out to their summer houses now and I can totally see us bringing this to a summer house and actually getting some really tasty espresso. So overall initial impression is this is interesting. We're gonna to continue to play with it. Um, we want to hear from you guys. How are you using it? Why are you using it? And then eventually one of our dear Patreons is gonna get one of these. So make sure that you sign up for Patreon so you can get your hands on it. And uh, with that, we just wanna thank you for watching and have a good day. We wanna give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you wanna see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.